give you, I will immediately call on Huey to follow on and tell us about um, thank your you very, work. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I was asked to speak about the uh, work that the National Union of Teachers now, becoming the National Education Union, has done um, in terms of making connections with uh, teachers and schools and, and children in Palestine um, and you know, maybe reflect on, on some of the lessons we've learned from that. Um, so, I mean, it's quite good to follow on from you actually because um, I think we are seeing the, um, how can I put it, we are seeing the, the harvest of, you know, years and years of persistent uh, uh, meetings, stalls, one-to-one -one conversations, visits like this that have been going on for years and years. And I think you're right, I think the other side, the people that think we shouldn't be campaigning on Palestine, hadn't realised actually how deep the solidarity is in this country amongst, I would say, when I say ordinary people, nobody's ordinary. But what I mean is, um, there, I think there is a very deep level of understanding among the mass of British people, not all, but a significant level, so that when these attacks come, actually people in the street go, yeah, but hang on, that's not right, because I, I've, met, I've met somebody, or I know somebody, or I've been there, or I've seen the, the social media stuff, or I've been to a rally, I've been to a march. And I think they just completely underestimated the work of groups like this consistently organising over decades, actually. So, you know, really well done, all of you, for everything you've done for the Palestinians so far. And that, that act of amplifying the voices of the Palestinians is really all they ever ask for. When you go over there, I'm sure many of you have been, when you go, they say, look, it's great that you come, but what we really want you to do is to go back and tell more and more people about what you've seen here, because they will believe you, because you are a witness. And so that, that is really, really significant. So how did the NUT get involved? Well, I, I sh it was people like Bernard Regan, actually, who, after the Shabra and Shatila massacre in 82, uh, got the, got the uh, NUT to, kind of, kind of got very involved in uh, building the solidarity movement, building things like Palestine Solidarity Campaign, and led to the affiliation of our union and lots of other unions to the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Um, but really the turning point for us as a union was in 2011 when um, a, couple, a couple of us had been to Palestine on the delegation uh, with, a trade, with another trade union and we had met some key people over there, um, a guy called Gerard Horton at the time was working with Defence of the Child International, he now runs another organisation. But we, we realised that what was happening to the child prisoners was a really important uh, issue that we could bring back and, and really use to build understanding of what's going on. <coughs> Gerard actually came and spoke to our conference um, and frankly his, his contribution, which was four minutes, um, really was a game changer for us. You could not hear a pin drop after he had finished explaining what, what was happening to Palestinian children in, 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 in the occupation. And that, soon after that, we started to take delegations over to Palestine. And I've lost count of how many, but we take two a year which is quite a big commitment for us. We get a lot of flack for it, we've come under attack on many occasions for it. But every time we take a delegation over, um, we take 12 or 14 people. They're lay members, they're not officers, they are teachers, uh, they are people from the regions all around the country. And we tend to take them in little groups, so we try and do a northwest group and then a southeast group, so that they go, they have this experience together, which is life changing, which when they come back, it has made them into very alert, very active campaigners, not just for Palestine, actually, for the Union as well, but in a way that they've got other people to come back and work with. So they've got a kind of a self-made network. And so all over the country, in our Union, we've got seven, you know, five, five or six individuals in each of those areas who have got first-hand experience, who have come back from Palestine, who have built solidarity actions in their communities. And so we actually, in the Union, have got, we feel we've got quite a deep commitment now to, to solidarity with Palestine. So when we do get attacked, we, we feel that on the whole we've got the large majority of our members behind us and that gives us the strength to actually keep going on and keep demanding more. I think it's really important that we don't just settle you know, for understanding about Palestine at a kind of an operational level uh, in organisations, but we really make sure, it's, especially if you're in a union, that it's getting down to the, mem to the, to the members of the union. We also created resources, so we've got some teaching resources, and the way we did that was we created four films. We did it initially with a charity called Educid, um, but I don't know, you may or may not remember a couple of years ago, one of our films came under attack. It was a film called My Name is Saleh, um, and uh, we came under attack because allegedly it was anti-Semitic. It was, it, was it was a deliberate kind of attack because it was around the time that they were getting flat for other stuff and you know as often is the way as we know people collect stuff and then they hold on to it and then they wait for a, a moment when they're in trouble and then to distract 
they, they chuck out stuff about you. Well, that's what happened to us, and we got, come under, came under great um, uh, exposure. We had the sun on our back, and the, the telegraph, and the mail was really pleasant. It was in the summer holidays, mm. and everybody was away except me and Bernard. Yeah, <laughs> um, but actually, when it came to anything, they made complaints to the Department of Education. We had meetings with the Board of Deputies. They said, your uh, resources are racist. The Department of Education said they're not. Um, and we said to them, well, what resources would you like us to use? You, sh you, you, you send us some resources that you recommend that you think are more balanced. We've never heard back from them. Okay? So uh, we, we've just carried on. Uh, and those films are still available, and I would commend them to you. Um, just to say a little bit about the, the, the wider movement, we have really tried as well to take our experience of our members' uh, experience of Palestine into the wider movement. So at the Women's TUC in March, it was the NEU that put together an emergency motion around our head to Mimi, which then became unanimously adopted, and we had a similar uh, unanimous vote and a great uh, applause. There was cheer a cheering and chanting when the motion was passed. Free, free, I had to meet me. Free, free, I had to meet me. Um, and then, of course, we went on to the TUC uh, conference where we had a similar motion passed again. We had the flags waving. Very, very significant show of strength for Palestine. Um, we've, uh, I, you didn't mention, but at the Labour, I don't think you did, at the Labour Party uh, conference, we had a fringe the other night. I counted 350 people at that fringe, and the doors that in, were into the hall were open, and there were like another 10 or 12 people standing in the hall looking in. It was absolutely electric. It was very American in feeling that meeting, actually. There was cheering and interrupting and clapping. It was very, it was a bit like a rally, actually. And so I think what you're saying about people really, you know, the, the opposite has happened to people being quiet and being silent. People have been actually stirred into action, and actually, um, this kind of attack on our right to, to speak out about what's happening in Israel and Palestine um, hasn't worked. In fact, it's made people a bit annoyed, I think, that you can't, you can't tell us we can't do this. And I think that's really, really positive. So the last thing I was going to say was, um, over the summer there was a whole thing about the IHRA, um, and I think it was very interesting, the virtue signaling that went on, from a lot of MPs who I don't think are very well known for campaigning for justice in Palestine, but were very, very keen to tell us that it wasn't going to stop them doing just that. That the IHRA was not about silencing criticism of Israel. It was actually about um, it was it was it was specifically about anti-Semitism, and actually it wouldn't stop them, and it wouldn't stop them so much that they were going to say something about Israel. So Jess Phillips tweeted that the Israeli government is racist, and actually the IHRA got. Uh, uh, Thing which she supported was not going to stop her campaigning against a racist state. That's brilliant, Jess. Okay, so you know, let's get her along. Let's invite her to some meetings. Let's get her campaigning. <laughs> let's get her campaigning Absolutely. on some of the really important issues. Yeah. Um, and with Streeting again, he had a blog. He said, you know, we've got to get the IHRA. It's very, very important. Um, but actually, it's not going to stop us criticising Israel. You know, when Israel does bad things, we have to criticise it. And I'm not afraid to do that. And I think there was a lot of that going on over the summer. So I think we need to get all those names down. And we need yeah. to call them out. We say, OK, fine, that's brilliant. So you get involved. Join PSC. Come along. Uh, let's see what you're going to do to actually change things. So 142 MPs have signed an EDM on Palestinian child prisoners. Some of the highest... Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, EDM, an EDM with one of the highest signatories, certainly last in this government, I think third highest or something. Um, I think we go through that whole list and we, get, we, we actually start calling them out. But the fact that they've signed it means that they know that there is something very, very rotten in, in, in the, the Israeli government's practices. And one of the rottenest things is the treatment of child prisoners. So for me, I do have a particular attachment to this cause, and I, know, I always plug it, I know all the causes of the Palestinians are important, but I think the Palestinian child prisoners cause is one that speaks to everybody, because no one can defend the routine, brutal uh, detention, arrest, um, and conviction, 99% conviction rate of children, including increasingly the use of administrative detention on children and the use of solitary confinement on children. That is indefensible, and I think it's a really easy cause to go out there and win. It's one of PSC's um, key private campaign areas this year. It's going to be a focus for the lobby, and I would urge you uh, to take that, that cause out into, into the workplaces, into your communities where maybe people don't know so much. Just take that course to them because it's a really good door to open in to what is happening in Palestine. So thank you so much for everything you've done and for being here tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here.